Hey, kid, how would you like to kick me in the shin? How would I like to kick you in the shin? Huh? Mister, are you drunk? No, no, no kidding. I'll tell you what. If you kick me in the shin real hard, I'll give you a quarter. Okay, go ahead. Play it. Ah! It's a good one. It's a good one, boy. Adams. They're all nuts. Well, this might be how some people remember him, but not me. When I think of Elvis Presley, I, I go back to when I worked with him in 1962 on my first movie, It Happened at the World's Fair. I was 10 years old, and I really, I barely knew who Elvis Presley was because I was into baseball, not movie stars. But I got a kick out of working with him. Ah! It's a good one. It's a good one, boy. We had a great time working on that picture, but as we filmed, I noticed that crowds of girls were flocking to our set. I mean, uh, we were on location at the Seattle World's Fair, and it was my first experience seeing an actual mob scene. There must have been 8,000 girls just going crazy, blocking his way and seriously throwing themselves onto his car, and it just, uh, I mean, it was bizarre. At the time, I couldn't begin to understand how that must have affected Elvis. I don't know if, if he enjoyed that or not, but unquestionably those crowds and others like them, I think ultimately limited his life. He was the king of rock and roll, so I'm sure the screaming fans were nothing new. And if there were any doubts about Elvis as a movie star, I think they were silenced by the box office returns. Between 1956 and 1969, Elvis Presley made 31 feature films, and almost every one of them made money. What are you going to do with all that money? I'm going to buy me a herd of chorus girls and make them dance on my bed. <laughs> Hollywood and the Colonel had found a formula with Elvis that worked, <laughs> and they were going to stick to it. Elvis was young and inexperienced when he started acting, but I do think he was an athlete. And like any gifted person, if you give them a little time, they generally find their way. By the time of his third movie, Jailhouse Rock, it was pretty much proven that he could make it in Hollywood. One through a party in the county jail. The prison band was there, they began to wait. The band was jumping and the joint began to swing. You should have heard your knocked out jailbird sing that rock. Everybody let rock. Everybody in the wholesale block. As his movie career moved on and the scripts he was being offered were oftentimes less than stellar, I think he knew his talent wasn't being used, and I think he was frustrated because he, he realized that that wasn't going to change. Yet he was a singer first, and not just any singer, but the singer of the 20th century. If you don't want me to be cold as ice, treat me nice. Personality, his sex appeal, and his singing style honestly transformed American culture. And an Elvis movie to me is always worth watching simply because of Elvis. He just had so much raw energy. I mean, musical numbers literally explode off the screen. Hey, mama, don't you treat me wrong. Come and love your daddy all night long. That was going to be a big challenge, one of the biggest challenges of my career, to, uh, to try to capture that energy and enthusiasm for the 1979 film, Elvis. <laughs> Now, I don't take much stock in coincidences, but it is interesting to me that Elvis was 27 years old when I worked with him, when it happened at the World's Fair, and I was uh, 27 when I portrayed him. And most of the things I used, uh, I can honestly say I picked up from working with him on that one film. That's how strong an impression he made on me. I've even had a chance to revisit Elvis the Legend in a film that I made called 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Which it was kind of weird to put the outfit back on. But when you do, I think that uh, it's true to say anyone who does totally gets what he was about. You know, you can just uh, hear him saying, no, 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 man, I, I want the color really high, two inches higher all the way around, you know, and jewels, man, more jewels. <laughs> you know? 
One of the most telling stories about who Elvis really was involves my dad, and he was a character actor then, Bing Russell. He was with me one day on the set of It Happened at the World's Fair, and Elvis, who happened to be a fan of my dad's westerns, asked to meet with him. My dad was surprised and went over, and Elvis said to my dad, you know, nobody wears their cowboy hat the way you do, and if I ever get to do a western, uh, you wouldn't be offended if I wear my hat like that, will you? But to me, that was indicative of the kind of man that Elvis Presley really was a naive, innocent guy who just happened to be a phenomenal talent. And that's how I remember Elvis. Ah! For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Kurt Russell.